All right. Let's get rolling here this morning. Let's go over the strat this morning and the indicator. And so we got the strategy to our left. This is this morning trade setups. Yesterday we had some trade setups we went over. So this is the package we're packaging together for you guys. Hey, Thomas, good morning. Hey, thanks for the email, Thomas. So let's go over the uh, the, the package. This is the S&P this morning. So you'll notice we get, uh, let's go over the indicator-based system first, and we'll go over the strategy-based system. So this is what uh, uh, we're packaging together for all you uh, members, and it's going to look just like this. Uh, this is the S&P this morning, uh, live action this morning. You'll notice that we have uh, these yellow price bars that come up. These are trigger entries for possible buy setups or possible sell setups. And the easiest way to look at it is this. We have our trend filter, which is our zone. This is our zone. And our zone, if it's green, we have, we're looking for buy setups. If it's red, we're looking for sell setups. So we have a green zone this morning. Okay, if you look all the way um, back to midnight, we've had three zone breakouts. We've had one here for a big giant move at 2 a.m. in the morning. That started at 48.17. We had two, three zone breakouts this morning. All right. As an indicator, this is the indicator side of it. As an indicator, if you get a yellow price bar that forms, you have a possible breakout. Okay? So yesterday, Sal, you were dead correct, dead on, yes, on the S&P rallying into the close with my target of 15. It actually hit my target of 15. I'll show you how we did that. So good job, Sal. So... What he did is he recognized that the breakout level was a certain level. I'll show you in a second here. And there was our breakout level, and we're looking for a rally into the close. We had a rally into the close. So that's how you do it, Sal. So good job on picking that up. Once you broke out, the market just shot straight up into the close. So these are breakout levels. These are entry levels. Hey, Steve, good morning. That's an entry level at 309 yesterday. There's an entry level at 347 my breakout level was 4806 when we were talking about it in the room yesterday before it happened here at this level so price action was right here it said if the market stayed above HVA we're looking for a breakout at 4606 we got it there's 46 uh, 4806 I said the target into the close was 48.15. That was market profile. And the high was 48.17. So you can project that move, and I'm going to show you how we did this. From here, the projection was all the way to 48.15. Missed, missed the high by eight ticks. Did the same thing uh, Wednesday. where we projected the high and same thing Friday, projected the low within four ticks and what was it th two ticks within um, using market profile. So I'll show you how you can use market profile over here. It's worked since 1985 to project these breakout targets. Yeah, that was a nice trade, Sal. A hey, great job on picking that up on a heads up on that too. Nice nice work. So these, when they, form, when they, when, when they show yellow, these are breakout levels, possible breakout levels, right? Where we're going to get some energy in the market. So this is the one that started it yesterday that we were talking about live in the room before it happened. Breakout 4806, target 15. Then we got another one here, 47 target. So that was yesterday that we're talking about in the room before they broke out. And here's today. We got another one. 
right there at uh, 2 17 a.m. this morning market just exploded to the upside from entry level 48 17 a quarter and she just rallied hard all the way up to 32 potential 14 S&P points now here's what it looks like when it forms so this is what we noticed yesterday when Sal and I was talking in the room in the afternoon. What we noticed is this cup and handle formation. What it is, is you see price rally. And I was talking with Sal and I said, listen, we should see a breakout level form, right Sal? I said, on this retracement, we should see a breakout level form on the retracement. So as this retraced, these dots were not here yet. And then all of a sudden, these dots appeared. And that was our breakout level. This happened over here when we were discussing it. So what I noticed was a cup and handle formation right there. I said at this level, when we were rallying, we need a retracement. We're, we were above high value area, so we're in a, a hard move up. It was formed a cup and handle. There's a retracement. These dots formed. I said, once we get that yellow bar that breaks, that's your cup and handle. It looks like that. We broke out. Market took off. I love these mini cup and handles. Now, let me educate you about something real quick. These are the best breakouts you're going to get. What you're going to see is you're going to see these mini cup and handles. You're going to see price rally. You're going to see these dots form, these breakout levels. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six dots in a row, right? Six dots, three dots, four dots. You're going to see a small cup and handle. This is one of the most powerful continuation formations out there in any stocks, Forex, commodities, currency, futures. It is powerful. There's your breakout and the close. What do we talk about? In our last video, last two videos, I said you get a lot of energy when institutional trading comes in or these algorithms come in at 3.50 p.m. to 4 p.m., that last 10-minute window, and she shoots right into the close. All right? So then we come into today, breaks out, 17-point rally. Then we come into another cup and handle formation at 5 a.m. this morning. Once you get this, once you start rallying hard, guys, and, and you know that uh, uh, the, the key level is, is that I'm going to show you how market profile works over here to help you. Once that key level shows that that breakout level is there, once that yellow trigger forms, you got a possible rally. There's your break. Market rallies. Here's that mini cup and handle. Now look at the similarity, like I just told you, that these are the best ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at that mini cup that forms. Gives you a big heads up on the S&P. That's the mini. It's a beautiful looking setup. These are the ones you want to get all, that you want to really, really fire off into because they have it's a small pause in the market before a continuation. And the market, that's our current status right now. This just triggered here at 8 o'clock this morning, just 38 minutes ago. Triggered in at 36, even the high as 41. And a quarter, five and a quarter potential on that mini cup. So if I look and I come in and I look at this indicator, this is what you get on your own computers. I love these mini cups. Now let me let me skinny this down. These are the big cup and handles you're going to see. This one. And here's the minis. There's a big cup. There's your breakout. There's a mini. We went over this in the room before it broke out. Way ahead of time. We had, geez, 30. We had 23 minute heads up. Actually, 24 minute heads up before they even broke out. These are, these are very leading indicators. 
Look at the similarity between these two setups. There's your big cup, the handle. Well, that's a breakdown in the afternoon. Here's a breakdown in the afternoon too. Here's what a cell looks like, by the way, guys. It's a mini cup of handle. You go down. Go up. Right when it retraces in a hard downtrend, that's when you got to get ready for the, these these uh, breakout levels to form. Crossed. So that's an inverted cup of handle. Right there's your push, right? So that's what we're looking at. Now, what's this indicator below? Well, what's this oscillator below? What you want to see in strong markets or weak markets. So if this is looking to break out, you want to see this oscillator in a stronger position. You want to see this oscillator above 100. So this is my arrow that automatically came up, and this is going to be on your workspace also. This is a slingshot. So you can use the arrows in combination with getting into a stronger position here once it gets above for confirmation. In other words, like the NASDAQ futures right now, we got two cell setups. These are two, these are two cells. The best, let me go over the best slingshot you're going to get. The best slingshot you're going to get, now pay attention to this. The best slingshot you're going to get on the NASDAQ futures, the best one you're going to get. This is the best one you're going to get is if you get to this outer zone, now pay attention to this, and you will reap the educational rewards on this. If I close outside, and this is what the strategy is going to do for you on the, on the I added to the, um, I added to the uh, close, one candle outside, my largest zone, just one candle. And within three candles, it closes back inside of this zone. This is the highest probability arrow you're going to get on, an, on a slingshot. Why? It's a full retracement. You'll notice on these slingshots, these are breakdowns on the S&P, by the way. On these slingshots, when you get to the outer zone, you get to this outer zone level and I start closing one or more candles. As soon as I close one candle back inside that that largest level, right? My 54 level and close back inside of it. See it close back inside of it. That is your trigger for the highest probability retracement. This works on all markets like this. I put it as a filter inside of the I put it as a filter inside of our strategy you're getting also okay so when you see these and they get these deep retracements to be aware of that okay so this is a deep retracement sell this morning it just happened at 832 this morning on the on the S&P I don't mean on the Nasdaq futures now the Nasdaq futures right here we have a breakdown that's coming up We're going to get a yellow bar that forms in a second. Well, it's, it's already short, I'm sorry, already. So it's short from back here. Let's, let's go back in here. I got a runner running on this thing. From earlier. So, but what it will do... Get this out of the way real quick. There it is. There's my yellow bar. So right when you break, see, see how this yellow bar formed on the NASDAQ futures? So the strategy is short right now. The strategy is short. See that yellow bar that formed? So the targets are off. So you can use this strategy 
pretty much any type of market. This is a live, uh, it's working right now on the NASDAQ futures on a breakdown. The same thing works with these markets also. There's my breakdown level. Right, there's my breakdown level. There's my continuation. Okay, that just happened just now. But what you'll notice is, is like I said, is what you'll notice is that you will get a big heads up on this. So we had a heads up on this all the way back here. So you didn't get a price breakdown until 8.30.45. So 13 minutes later was your short opportunity. 13 minutes later. So here is your high probability slingshot because why? I just educated you guys. The best slingshot you're going to get is you get to the outer zone. You close one candle or more outside the outer zone. Once it closes back inside that outer zone without trend changing, that's your highest probability slingshot you're going to get right there. This is a little bit inside of it. This is my highest probability. Go back on your charts and look. When it closes one or more candles without trend changing and closes right back inside, that's your highest probability swing high or swing low in any market. It works really, really well with the slingshot. But this started us off. It got into a weaker market here. There's our weaker market. Right there's our weaker market here. It's down. There breaks down. Here's my additional slingshot arrow. Here's your confirmation for short to go short right there. 840. Right? And then we get the breakdown on the NASDAQ here just now. Right there's your NASDAQ futures. Closes two candles below it. Now, you have an option of changing how many candles or bars you want to close below this swing, this breakdown. I got it closing three, which is right here, which is 29 and a half. But you can have it where it closes at 30 with one candle if you'd like. You have an option of doing that, all right? I also have an option in the strat where you can get these counter moves. Once it gets a swing low, and we are, we once we form, so this is a trend, I mean, this is a breakdown, this is a break out, I'm sorry, of our breakdown level that was formed. You had 13 minute heads up on that short. For those that you that want to do it, I have a toggle switch that once you form this new breakout level, we typically get a retracement. You can take this retracement back up too if you like. You can strat there. It's in part of the strategy. You can take that back up if you want on that price bar. All right. So we will go over that stuff. to get below 100 or above 100. These are automatically set up for you. Then we have this also. We have this, these yellow price bars forming when breakout levels are happening, and these price levels will show up. You can use it through via a strategy form like this. Here's a strategy breakout. This is when it broke out here this morning. You can see the next breakout level on the S&P has formed. We're waiting for the next breakout, which I'll show you. 
So let's look at this trade that just happened here on the NASDAQ futures. So let's look at the trades in a row, the NASDAQ futures. Make sure you understand this. My best slingshot you're going to get on the NASDAQ futures. You close one candle outside my largest zone, my outer zone. One or more candles, without trend change, it closes back in and the arrow up fires. That's your best slingshot you're going to get in the room right here, this one. It confirmed by getting the oscillator below zero or negative 100. Next arrow forms, fires on that price bar, get below the zero, negative 100 here. That confirmation of a short. We have our breakout levels that automatically form at this level. There's my breakdown at that price bar for the short. Market comes back up to my zone. This is more of a shallow zone. This is a deeper. This is a deeper zone. This is the best zone trade you can get if you get one, one more, more candles outside and then close it back inside of it because you're at a deep retracement. Arrow comes up right there on this price bar. Gets below our level. So that's another short. And then we'll get a yellow price bar that comes up right here. If this closes two candles below my next breakout level on the NASDAQ futures, this is trading live right now. If it goes below 24, you'll get another one that fires off. We'll put this to the side. We have it on crude oil also down here. We have it on crude. We had a breakdown on crude this morning. There was our short on crude. We had a breakdown at 6.38 this morning, waiting on another a break. This is a runner on crude. That's why I didn't show this a yellow price break here. It's still running. Strategy as that is. So you got a runner on that level. As far as that goes. My point is, is that you can use these levels to find breakout levels or breakdown levels, what have you. So let's go back down to the S&P. So here's the NASDAQ futures breaking again. So there's a breakdown cell. Here's a breakdown cell here. That's where the yellow bar just formed. I said it's coming up on a cell again. There's your short. 23 and a quarter. Low is what? 20 and a half so far. So you can see the, the, the basics of the program. You got, there's two types of trading with the system. You got your retracement trading that has these audible alerts that come up when these arrows fire off. You combine that with it making sure they're in a stronger, weaker market, so you're trading momentum. You got your breakdown levels with the yellow, yellow price bars that form. Right? You got your strategy that you can go with it if you want to strategy in on these levels. So you can use this strategy. If you notice, here's the S&P live this morning. What's our next breakout level live right now? Our next breakout level on the strategy, it shows at 48, 40, and 3 quarters. Our indicator is 48, 40, and 3 quarters. They're the same level. So you can see the big heads up you get. This is now forming a cup and handle again. Now, why is this important level at 48, 40, and 3 quarters? Why? Let's get let's dig a little deeper into this and educate you guys on how price action works here. Since 1985, market profile, hey Adam, good morning. Market profile has worked phenomenally. Thank you, Peter Stoudemire from the CBOE. Market profile, right? The two key important levels on market profile, if you want to see where a breakout level could possibly run is high value area. I sent an email out yesterday to all you traders. High value. This is all the trading participants in the market. All the hedge, all the banks, all the prop firms, all the algorithms. This is everything together. These two levels are key for breakout levels. How did I project the market could run from 4806 back here? When we're talking in the room at this breakout level at 48.06, so we, we were talking on this retracement right here. 
when these breakout levels came at 4806, I said if we break out of 4806, I posted in the room at this level. Look at the post. Then if we break out this level, the market should rally to 48.15 here. How did I project that? How did I project, and that was a swing high 17 before it tanked. How did I project that from 06 to 20? I used market profile. So market profile yesterday was lined up. So if we look at yesterday, let me educate you about balance and imbalance markets. I talked to traders yesterday. If you're inside of HVA is a big red thick line volume profile. It's been around since 1994. Price profile, these dots have been around since 1985. So there's low value area, LVA, green, HVA, red. Well, at this level, we were we broke out of high value area already. And we were talking in the room. We were right here. We're above high value area. So you are in an imbalanced market. So inside a profile, in between, inside HV and LVA, you are balanced. If you ever see you get outside a profile, HVA or below LVA, you are in an imbalanced market. There's no overhead resistance. None. We have nothing above us. Nothing to stop this market until you get to the next dots, which are price, price profile. If we were to break down below LVA, we have nothing below us until these next levels come up. So when we broke out, what I posted in the room was if we break out a 4806 breakout level for an entry trigger, our target is 15. And sure enough, it grabbed, it tested profile. It broke out of that swing right there. It broke out. There was our breakout level at 06 and went right to 17 and that was a swing high we did that Wednesday too it came within what eight uh, four ticks or eight ticks at the bottom when I projected 87 that's because I was looking at profile so what I'm saying is is now this morning what do we have we know we're in a balance mark right now we're balanced we're in between profile, right? It just knocked its head right on it and it's getting rejected. And our profile is not a 30-minute profile. We use a, a longer profile to find these key levels. So I know my profile is at 4840, right? So I know I'm in an imbalanced market where there's going to be buy stops catching these short, short side. Because the market is balanced if it's in between profile. So if we get outside a profile that we're in an imbalanced market, the market should feed upon itself and see a lot of buy stops hit covering these shorts. That's what happened yesterday. Well, guess where our breakout level is? Our breakout level is 48, 40 and three quarters. Our market profile is 48, 40. You got a key level right here. 48, 40 and three quarters is another key level that we need to watch for. Okay. Now what you can do, knowing these, so let's look, go back to strategy. Here's the two trades it's had this morning so far. It got this breakout on the strategy here and got the breakout on the strategy there, right, this morning on the S&P. But look where it's sitting now. It's sitting right here at this level. It's sitting on this cup and handle retracement. If I'm cranking back up here and you want the computer to pull you in when this price bar closes above then you have the ability to let the strat do the work for you let you pull you in at this level and let it fill you on the trade with your stop and your targets and the strategy is very very simple it's got price targets it's got a stop it's got the number closes you want above or below the breakout level, I have it at three in the room. You can put it at one or two if you want better fills. One one close breakout gives you about a four tick better fill, sometimes six. NASDAQ could be even more with slippage.
but this is the package you're going to get. You're going to, it's going to look like this. It's going to look like strategy to the far left on the S&P, indicator with my arrows, I'll make me fire, market profile to your far right. And then if you want to change it to whatever market you want to look at, this is plug and play. So if I go this to the NASDAQ futures right now, you put the NASDAQ futures in, there's your shorts. There's your arrows where your audible alert came in because these arrows, they fire because of these four, these setups right here. First wave, slingshot, Momo, failure, trap. With an audible alert, it sounds like a little doorbell. When that arrow came off, a doorbell came on your speaker saying possible short. Got a weaker market, there's a short. Doorbell came off here. Short, weaker market, nice short. Short, got below zero, weaker market, short. Arrow came off here, short, weaker market. Market tanks. Breakdown level. Market follows through the downside. Breakdown level. Market follows through the downside. Breakdown level. Market follows through to the downside. So you can see how this works in a live market. All right. You can put it in any market that you want to trade. The trailing part of it is this. If you use chart trader, I would use the trail step system, meaning what I like on the NASDAQ futures is if you're doing price targets, is doing your first target, the rest break even, let the runners run. If you're doing chart trader, you can do chart trader, their automated trail system, where you can put the frequency of the trades, if you go to chart trader, And we go into a trail. You can have an automated trail where it steps. You can have your profit trigger, your profit trigger at a break even plus X amount of ticks, and then step up every 15 ticks. I mean, every um, uh, eight ticks. I mean, when the price target gets to eight ticks, it will start trailing every tick by a 15 tick stop loss. You can trail it like something like this, where I would do a trail on the automated trail on these. If you've done the S&P or what have you. But you can see how you're hitting the breakdown levels for shorts. That's a good level, short, 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 short. So this is the package we're packaging, packaging together for you guys. I want to show you live action this morning, how this works. This exact same workspace you're going to get. You're going to get the ability to use this workspace where these arrows form. These arrows are separate of the breakdown. Zone breakdowns. The zone breakdowns are these yellow price bars that form for an, a, a trigger entry. So if I'm trading the NASDAQ futures since 8 o'clock this morning, you've had one, two, three, four triggers to go short. If I'm trading the retracement, so th those are momentum entries. One, two, three, four. If I'm trading the, the zone retracements, you've had one, two, three, four opportunities. So you had four zone breakdown opportunities and you had four arrow with alerts on your computer opportunities. Okay. And then if you wanted to do a, go back to the S&P, if you wanted to do a strategy side of it, we do have the strategy where the strategies will come in. I set these charts out to you. This is the breakout that happened yesterday. into the close, we do have that for you. Your stops, 
can be are automatically put into the strategy. So if you trade the NASDAQ futures, obviously you get a lot more trades. You can adjust your stops accordingly to that. So the next breakout level, just to sum up, is we're looking at 48, 40, and three quarters. And that will be there all morning this morning for a breakout. And Derek, there is a break even plus X amount of ticks on your targets also for, uh, for that also on the breakout strategy. Now, as far as this one goes, you do have an ATR trail as far as the arrows go. You do have an ATR trail and stuff like that for the um, for the slingshots, just on the breakouts because the breakouts are pretty much one directional. If you notice the breakout trades, they're one directional. Look at this. It's when energy comes in the market. We're trying to get energy in the market. That's what we're trying to do. I marked yesterday the ES was above HVA, indicating a stronger move to the upside on breakouts. That's what's here. It's above HVA. Look at the directional moves on these breakout trades. Okay. All right, so we're packaging this all together. But like I said, the workspace can look like this. Strategy to left, indicator to right. And you can move it how you want it. You can make the indicator larger, strategy smaller. But this is how we're going to set your workspace up with market profile over to your right also.